everybody. We are live right now from the News Channel 5 Forecast Center. I'm Mark Johnson along with Jason Nicholas and Trent McGill. It is the Power of Five Tornado Survival Guide. And I know today's high was 27 degrees. <laughs> it felt nothing like spring, but spring is coming. Severe weather season is right around the corner. I mean, we're talking days or weeks away. So this is very important that we're here tonight. Yeah. We got a lot to talk yeah, about. Yeah, jam packed half hour here. So again, watch. You can tweet with us. We'll talk about that later, too. We're going to yeah. talk to uh, storm chasers, what they go through during severe weather. Why season. you shouldn't do it. And if you see a storm, you can maybe take a look at the cloud formations and let us know what you can expect. And of course, send us, send us your, uh, your photos as well. So right. we've got all that. And of course, at the end, we're going to do our severe weather forecast That's for the right. spring. That's right. You won't yeah. want to miss that. We're going to dive into just about all of it. And it's 100% interactive. We want to see you on Twitter. We want to see you on Facebook. We're live right here on News Channel 5. We're also streaming live on News Net 5. We're on uh, our News Channel 5 app. We're on your mobile tablet. Mobile we're tablets, there. everything. Now, how, so. can they, how can they connect with us? Hashtag OH Tornado. That's we're going right. to make it trend here in Northeast Ohio on Twitter. So yep. And we're monitoring our severe weather chat page. You can go there right now, watch us and chat with us, ask us questions. But first, let's talk about a very active tornado season from last year to get you ready for this year. Take it away. Oh, my God. This may look like a storm chase from Tornado Alley, but it's not. This is last year, Wayne County, Ohio. The afternoon of August 7th, startled commuters see this tornado racing along Route 30 toward Orville. It's hitting ground. Look. Oh, yeah. my gosh. <gasps> It chewed up mainly farmland, but one house was not so lucky. Pieces of the roof were hurled a half a mile down the road. Debris in there. Oh, my God. Ohio averages 16 tornadoes per year, and even though the United States overall saw fewer tornadoes through last year, Ohio had nearly two dozen above normal, including seven right here in the northeast corner. And the wind came up pretty strong. And then uh, we looked out to our kitchen window toward the back of our property, and we saw five trees go down. Most tornadoes occur between 2 and 7 p.m. when the sun's heat is at its maximum, but that's not always the case. Just ask the folks at Ursuline College in Pepper Pike. On July 20th, a tornado packing winds of 110 miles per hour dropped down at 3.35 in the morning, damaging parts of the gym and several other buildings. Luckily, no students or faculty were injured. It came through the woods here to our left, went over, hit the building, and then went all the way down through the side of the lake, and we've lost a lot of trees. Most tornadoes in Ohio occur during the months of June and July, just as tornado season is settling down in the Plain States. First responders are always on the lookout for severe weather during these months here in Ohio. But what happens when they're the ones under the severe weather attack? On July 10th, a tornado packing winds of over 100 miles per hour demolished Mineral City's fire department. All these Tuscarawas County first responders could do was watch as their home base was completely destroyed by the twister. We got into the dining hall and the roof just lifted up. I was hunkered in the doorway trying to hold myself down. It wasn't very long. It was over. Okay, right now live on Newsnet5.com, Mark and Trent are answering questions. We just had one about First the Cleveland question, split. What causes the Cleveland split? So I'm answering that right now on our... Newsnet5.com. Okay, yeah, severe storm now storm chasing has really uh, been kind of all the rage. We've all done that here in, uh, in the weather office. And our morning meteorologist, Tara Blake, uh, she works on Good Morning Cleveland. She's at home sleeping because she's got to be up in the, uh, the middle of the night, basically. She sat down with a uh, storm chaser to talk about the dangers of chasing and what they look for. Okay, Michael, let's get started first with how do you define a chaser? Oh, that's a good question. Basically, anybody that goes out to either just witness storms, report back what the storms are doing. I got my start in chasing with Valparaiso University uh, with their storm intercept team, and the first time I went out chasing was in the spring of 2005. Wow. So why do you continue to chase so many years after that beginning? Well, there is a fascination with severe weather. There's something about going out and witnessing Mother Nature and sometimes, unfortunately, at her worst. But there is a fascination to witness it, to learn from it, and just to be, in a sense, uh, how do I want to word it, in a sense, basically, just to kind of witness the power that Mother Nature has. Yeah, absolutely. It's beautiful, it's scary, it's dangerous. So why is chasing so important, Michael? Well, there's only so much that you can see 
when looking at Doppler radar, you know, the, as the radar goes out in a distance, it actually gets higher into the atmosphere due to the curvature of the Earth. So you need people to report what the storm is doing at ground level so you actually know what is going on. You know, you've picked a storm, you have your eyes on it, and now even you, someone that's a professional chaser, gets scared. I want to know about your scariest chase. There's two that come to mind, and one was April 13th of 2012, and we were in Cooperton, Oklahoma, and I actually, I made a mistake in doing what I did. I drove a, a little too close to a rain wrap circulation, and at the time, the storm was not tornado warned. We had just pulled off on the side of the road, and a tornado literally formed right in front of us, and we had to back up to get out of the way, and after everything finally settled down I was my heart was pounding I, I was so nervous wow that's incredible you know that leads me to a very important question for all us Ohioans out here why should we leave chasing to the professionals it's very dangerous even myself I consider myself relatively a smart and safe chaser but even I've gotten myself in dangerous situations if you don't know what you're doing you don't know what to look for I mean, it, it can be very dangerous and if not deadly, I would certainly uh, it just basically, you know, leave it to somebody that knows what they're doing. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. It's certainly going to make a difference uh, in this wild and wacky world of weather that we're living in. And chase season's almost here, so I'm sure you're ramping up. We are getting there. Yes, we are. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Tara. Mm. Great information right there. Great footage also. And we're not done. We're going to take a quick break right here. But coming up after the break, we're going to talk about safety tips. We're going to talk about diving into those storms. Completely interactive. Don't forget Twitter, Facebook. Hashtag OHTornado. Hashtag OHTornado. We'll be right back.